Hey everybody, welcome to Pinky Tech. I'm Joe, and today we're going to review the River 5 CPU cooler from Ares Game. Uh, so we'll take a look, get it unboxed, get it installed, and see how it compares against a couple of these stock CPU coolers from AMD. So without further ado, let's get started and see how it performs. All right, now for the unboxing here. Open this up. Looks like a... You get a free gift if you fill out a survey it looks like. So that's pretty cool. Looks like it is a RGB mouse pad. So put that aside. We have the instructions here. Uh, looks pretty, pretty solid paper here if you care about that sort of thing. I don't know that I do, but good to have instructions. Uh, let's see. All right, so this is the mounting hardware. Uh, looks like it's got everything there and the mounting on here uh, did specify pretty much any uh, socket in the last, I don't know, five, eight years or so. Uh, should be fine mounting there. You can check their website for the specifics on there. I won't go into too much detail there. Uh, pulling off, this is a nice foam panel and we've got, here's the ARGB fan. Uh, it does have a four pin PWM uh, as well as a... Uh, the RGB or ARGB header and also has another one where it looks like you can daisy chain a couple of these together if you wanted to That's that and La pièce de résistance or whatever they say uh, So here we go. This is the actual cooler itself and it's actually pretty sturdy it, it feels pretty solid. It's not overly heavy, but definitely not a flimsy piece of metal here uh, the fins are in good shape. I do like that it is all black. Um, this is plastic up on top here. And yeah, you got the five heat pipes and of course remove this before installing. Um, but yeah, it's pretty close to a, basically a Hyper 212 Evo or something like that. Um, so yeah, I'm expecting good things out of this. I think this should cool at 3600 pretty well. All right, now that we're all unboxed, let's go ahead and get this thing installed into the system and we can start doing some performance benchmarks. All right, so the install is done. It was pretty straightforward, um, but do RTFM uh, if you you know read the flipping manual. Uh, yeah, flipping. That's what that's what the F stands for. Just a couple of notes on it. So with the bracket itself, uh, just pay attention. There is a spot on there on the bracket for AM3 and AM4. At first glance, it looks like you could just throw the mounting screws into it and it will be fine. But there is actually uh, an orientation to it, so you need to make sure you do that. Uh, that cost me a couple minutes figuring that out and putting the back plate on. Uh, secondly, the other thing that you need to be aware of is the metal bracket that sits across the IHS itself. These screws actually do move in and out. So at first I thought it wasn't lining up and was like, oh, you know, this piece of garbage doesn't even fit. Um, no, it's not true. It's just I didn't read the flipping manual like I said before, and essentially those screws move in and out. And once I figured that out, it was easy enough to get it on. So a pretty straightforward installation. All that stuff was actually marked in the manual. Had I bothered to read it, it probably would have taken me about five minutes less to get it done. All that being said, I did test the River 5 cooler against both the stock Intel Wraith Stealth cooler, uh, which comes with the 3600. Uh, it also comes with the 5600X, by the way, just FYI. And then, of course, the rest of the 5000 series don't have a cooler. This cooler would probably work just fine for those as well. Um, and then I did test it as well against the Wraith Spire cooler, which I think is the cooler they should have included with the new line of uh, AMD processors. But... It is what it is. I don't get to make those decisions for AMD. So, you know, we'll, we'll just roll with it. So we have the AMD Wraith Stealth Cooler, the Wraith Spire Cooler, and then the River 5 Cooler from Aries Game. 
Now, as for the system we are benchmarking itself, it is a Ryzen 5 3600, so not exactly the most extreme uh, processor we could put on to test the cooling, but I think the results kind of speak for themselves there. Uh, it does have 16 gigs of G-Skill uh, RAM in it, uh, Rip Jaws, I believe it is, at 3200 megahertz. It's on a B550 ATX motherboard or micro ATX motherboard. Uh, it's got three fans, two in the front as intake, one in as exhaust, and it's a Lee and Lee case. I uh, will put all the information down in the description box below there um, we left all stock settings on it so we're not doing any overclocking outside of changing the ram to use the xmp profile so it does run at 3200 megahertz um, other than that we didn't change any of the fan curves we didn't change make any changes to pbo anything else so it is running at stock settings which you'll see in the benchmark all right, so moving on, uh, first one to take a look at idle temp. So with the stock rate stealth cooler, uh, the idle temp for the Ryzen 5 3600 was sitting at 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, switching over to the race spire cooler, that did drop it a bit down to 30 degrees Celsius. So you can see just the huge jump that made. Um, and then for the River 5 cooler, the idle temperatures were around 28 degrees Celsius. And of course, those temperatures will move up and down a little bit depending on, you know, background processes kicking off, things of that nature. But all in all, a good start for the River 5 is it's, you know, demolishing what we set forward with the Stealth and, you know, beating even the, the beefier AMD Wraith cooler as well, uh, Wraith Spire cooler as well. All right, so starting off the benchmarks here, we have Prime 95. Now, I understand this is not a real world application and all that good stuff. You can leave all the comments destroying me about using Prime 95 in the benchmark down in the description or down in the comment section below. You can't write in the description. That's only for me. So, whoops. Uh, anyway, the Stealth Cooler uh, did not fare very well. So the Stealth the Wraith Stealth Cooler uh, jumped up to 96 degrees during our testing. And this was just a 10 minute run of Prime 95. It reached 96 degrees. Uh, it did actually hit the 4.2 boost clock for the 3600. However, it was brief and short lived as it began throttling itself back all the way back down to 3.3 gigahertz uh, to maintain you know, under 100 degrees Celsius basically. So a lot of thermal throttling with that particular processor. Now the race fire cooler did fare a bit better doing uh, 88 degrees as this max temperature. Once again, it thermal throttled itself back down to about 3.5 gigahertz for most of the test. It did take longer to get down to that or up to that temperature than the Stealth did. The Stealth was almost immediately into the 90 degree territory. It did take a couple minutes for the race spire to move up to the 85 degrees and then eventually top out at 88 degrees. Once again, it did thermal throttle itself back down which you can expect when a CPU is running that hot. As for the River 5 cooler, it actually peaked out after 10 minutes at 76 degrees, so it didn't even crack 80 degrees, and it actually maintained the 4.2 gigahertz boost clock throughout most of the test. All right, for our next benchmark, we ran the Cinebench R23 single core test, and these results were a bit closer together as you would expect because it's just a single core test, with the Stealth and the Spire cooler both topping out at 70 degrees. I uh, should have recorded the the results, the, the test results, but I didn't. And um, so I don't know what the actual score was. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, however, we did test the River 5 cooler as well. And that one actually stopped at 64 degrees. So once again, it's keeping it much cooler. Uh, once again, I should have wrote down the actual numbers for it, but I didn't because I'm a bad YouTuber. And once again, comment section, flame, you know what to do. All right, and then running Cinebench R23 in multi-core mode, once again, a 10 minute loop on all these tests. Uh, we saw, once again, the Stealth Cooler uh, shot up to 96 degrees for that run. Uh, and it did run, pretty much started throttling itself back down, the same as we saw during the Prime 95 run, even though uh, Cinebench is more closely, you know, like a, an actual workload someone would do is in a pro productivity setting. Uh, but it's a self cooler and if you're going to use that it certainly will get you by through gaming and such like that but you should really invest in a better cooler maybe the river five which there'll be an amazon affiliate link below for that you could check out because i'll probably recommend it at the end of this video uh but if you're looking at a spire cooler instead it, it once again reached 86 degrees so it did fare better than the prime 95 uh test that we did However, it's still very warm and once again did start thermal throttling itself as well to try to keep from burning up as you would expect a processor to do these days. 
And the River 5 cooler did the same run, same 10 minute pass on it. Once again, I didn't collect the scores for these and I'm sorry guys, I, I apologize. But it did actually keep it during its 10 minute run to 73 degrees Celsius. Uh, and once again, uh, it's running at pretty much the 4.2 boost clock that you would expect it to run at because it is staying well under 80 degrees. So steady power, steady cooling, and you get a better result at, out of the cooler. All right, and you may say to yourself, okay, that's well and fine for benchmarks, but what about gaming? So I did run the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider with both the Spire Cooler and the River 5 Cooler. Uh, the Spire Cooler mostly kept things under 70 degrees. However, it, it's, you know, the boost clocks you can see were down under the 4.2 gigahertz, even slightly, but once again, even if it's a little bit, you're still losing gaming performance. Uh, if it's enough, maybe you don't care, but it's something I would definitely look at. Uh, the River 5 cooler from Aries Game was actually able to keep it under 60 degrees for the most part. During scene switching, some more intensive spots, it did spike up to the mid 60s, maybe 63, 65, but quickly came back down, running mostly in the mid to high 50s, uh, which is really good for gaming. And once again, maintaining that 4.2 gigahertz boost clock throughout the entire benchmark. All right, so what do I think? I think this is actually a really good cooler. It's got good RGB on it. It looks very nice. It's um, It runs pretty quiet. Uh, all the fans actually made a fair amount of noise. And uh, after testing, I went into the BIOS and actually set a better fan curve on it. Didn't affect performance really. It just kept it from ramping up so high uh, as there's a pretty aggressive curve on there. So we were able to bring it down. Didn't really change the numbers as far as the performance or anything like that. Just kind of changed the, the touch points for the noise of the system. Obviously, if you have it under load, you expect it to be a bit louder from all the fans ramping up to have to provide the cooling. Um, but you don't want to have to listen to it at idle at you know a 60% fan speed. That was kind of that was a bit aggressive uh, for the for the motherboard manufacturer there. But once again, uh, set that and that was great. Um, like I said, RGB is great. This cooler is very solid. The instructions are good on it. Um, I'm really struggling to find something bad to really say about it. Um, it's it's a good cooler it really is and for under 30 bucks it's cheaper than the hyper 212 um it's probably the best budget air cooler that you're gonna find um and i'll be honest with you i ran the race stealth or the race spire uh cooler for a very long time on my 2600x i was a big fan of it i like it better than the intel stock coolers however it, you know the numbers speak for themselves it's not just anecdotally it's just the the River 5 is a better cooler than any of the stock coolers, and it'd be interesting to see if any of you guys have a 3600 and a Hyper 212. Leave a comment. Let me know what your temps look like, and let's kind of compare some things. Um, I didn't have a Hyper 212 or another one to kind of compare it to, so unfortunately, I'm, yeah, I'm a victim of my own limitations of inventory right here, so couldn't get that for you. But I think, like I said, for under 30 bucks, you're not going to find a better cooler on the market. Guys, so that's it. Uh, probably the best cooler under 30 bucks you're going to find. If you like the video, make sure you hit the like button. If you didn't like it, wait, wait to the end. So don't hit dislike. Um, either way, subscribe. That way you can dislike my next video at the beginning of it like you should have done and, and all will be well in the universe. But as always, guys, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.